This is part 4 of my video lectures on judgments. Uh, in this part, we are going to tackle the, the remaining uh, aspects of judgments. And instead of uh, having 7 parts, as I mentioned in the first video, I have collapsed it so that we only have 4 parts. But everything is discussed, everything that's important. So, the first thing that I want to talk to you about here is the difference between uh, judgment on the pleadings and summary judgment. Uh, the first point of distinction is as to the issue. By now, you should be familiar with the difference between failure to tender an issue and there does not appear to be a genuine issue. Okay, so for judgment on the pleadings, the answer fails to tender an issue. For summary judgment, there appears to be an issue but it is not genuine. Second, as to who files the motion. For judgment on the pleadings, the motion is filed by the claiming party such as the plaintiff. Siya lang ang pwedeng mag-file. Pero sa summary judgment, as you can see, the motion is filed either by the claiming party such as the plaintiff or the defending party such as the defendant. In fact, in the previous video, I pointed out that there are two separate sections under Rule 35 governing this. One is for summary judgment motions filed by the claiming party and the next one is summary judgment motion filed by the defending party. At saka yung time for filing, magkaiba rin. Kapag uh, summary judgment motion for the claiming party, it will be after uh, the answer is filed. For summary judgment motion for the defending party, it is any time before the judgment is rendered. As to the basis of the judgment, for judgment on the pleadings, I already told you this, the judge will only go within the four corners of the pleadings without considering anything outside the pleadings. So, hindi niya titignan yung mga attachments, mga affidavits, mga depositions. Pero, pag summary judgment, the judge will not only examine the pleadings, but also there has to be, it is even required, that there will be affidavits, depositions, and other documents submitted by the movant. Now, let's go to contents of a judgment. This is found in Rule 36, Section 1. According to this rule, this section, the judgment must be in writing. It must be personally and directly prepared by the judge. So, kahit pre-announce na ng judge sa court, kung hindi siya in writing, hindi pa siya talaga considered judgment under the rule. And then, yung preparation should be directly and personally prepared by the judge who heard the case or the judge who is promulgating the decision. Uh, number three, it must state clearly and distinctly the facts and the law on which it was based. Siyempre, dapat nakalagay yung basis. And remember, there must be a statement of the facts and the law. Kasi, like uh, we have been saying, there are only two basic things that are being uh, discussed or or argued, ab uh, argued about in a case, and that is question of law and question of fact. So, dapat, kung yun ang pinagsimulan, yung ending, which is the judgment, nakadiscuss din yung factual basis at saka legal basis. And then, number four, it must be signed by the judge. And number five, it must be filed with a clerk of court. Ibig sabihin, kahit nandyan na siya sa desk ng judge, napirmahan na, nandun na lahat ng requirements ng judgment, pero hindi pa niya file with a clerk of court, it will not yet be considered to be officially a judgment. So, all these requisites have to be present. Now, there's a case decided in 2004, that's Brother Mariano Mike Velarde versus Social Justice Society, which gives us the seven essential parts of a good decision. Number one, there must be a statement of the case. Ano ba statement of the case? Well, it is really a statement of the proceedings. Okay, number two, there must be a statement of the facts. Ano naman ang distinction nito? Ito yung the facts uh, on which the decision is based. Hindi ito yung proceedings, but these are the facts that happened before the case was filed. Okay? Yung statement of the case naman, these are the proceedings that took place since the filing of the case up to the rendition of the decision. The number three, there must be issues or assignment of errors. Number four, the court ruling which in which each issue is separately considered and resolved as a rule. Number five, there must be a dispositive portion. 
And number six, there must be an introduction or, or a prologue, pero hindi ito mandatory. Ginagawa ito kapag complicated yung case, kapag controversial yung case. And then number seven, also optionally, there must be an epilogue, especially again in cases in which controversial or novel issues are involved. Okay, now let's proceed to entry of judgment and final order. This is found in Rule 36, Section 2. If no appeal or motion for a new trial or reconsideration is filed within the time provided in these rules, the judgment or final order shall forthwith be entered by the clerk in the book of entries of judgments. O kahit merong appeal or motion for a new trial, kapag tapos na at wala ng further proceedings, then ibabalik na yon sa court of origin and the judgment will be entered. Okay. Now, uh, the date of finality of the judgment or final order shall be deemed to be the date of its entry. I will say more about this in a bit. The record shall contain the dispositive portion of the judgment or final order and shall be signed by the clerk with a certificate that such judgment or final order has become final and executory. So ito, balik tayo dun sa nakabold letters. The date of finality of judgment or final order shall be deemed the date of its entry. For example, notice was of the decision was received on April 15 by, by a party. The party has 15 days to file an appeal but did not. So, after April 30, after the 15th day, the decision shall become final. And that is the date of finality of the judgment. Even if it was actually entered in the book of finality of judgments at a much later date. Okay, so para walang confusion. So, yung date of entry is always the date of finality of judgment. It is not actually, not really the date in which it is entered by the clerk of court in the book of entries of judgment because that may come at a later time. Okay, so ang determinative again is the date of finality of the judgment or final order. Okay, so recap. From video 1 up to video 4, we have talked of 7 different matters. We talked of judgment after trial, judgment without trial, judgment on the pleadings, summary judgment. We distinguish between judgment on the pleadings and summary judgment, the contents of a judgment, and entry of judgment. So that ends our lecture on judgments.